during this very challenging time where we had to be forced to be separate from our friends and our colleagues, I was really grateful for this Anchor app, which has allowed me to continue the podcast after almost one year of working on it. Uh, It's free. You simply go to anchor.fm and download the app. And there you'll find all the tools that you need to record and edit your podcast, as well as to invite people onto your podcast through the app. Uh, Anchor also distributes the podcast for you on Apple, Spotify, and many other platforms. You have absolutely nothing to do except to record your podcast. Uh, If you have an ad like this, you can also make money. Uh, It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Uh, I would recommend it for anyone who wants to get their voice out there, has something to contribute, go for it. Anchor.fm is where you go to download the free app and to get started. Good luck with your podcast. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 2 of the Bees and Honey Podcast. Today we're speaking with Aya Uekawa, who is a Japanese-American uh, artist, a painter. She will be describing her work and telling us a little bit uh, about how it fits into today's world in America. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Thank you for taking this time to speak to me. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing this again. Yes, well, uh, hopefully now we will get all the questions in and we will post this uh, in the next few hours. So tell mm-hmm. me about some of uh, your older works, how you, about the time you started showing in galleries. Tell me how you began Oh, uh, with the commercial aspect of work. Yeah, it was, uh, I, it was 2005 and I was at the edge of uh, the decision time and either... I have to go back to Japan after I mm-hmm. finished the BFA program mm-hmm. or take more risk and ask my, mm-hmm. beg my parents to um, lend me some money <laughs> for yes. the tuition fee yeah, and take more depth to keep co- continue my education. But uh, it was very risky, <laughs> obviously. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. parents, oh, yes. And my parents are not um, very supportive about the idea of like staying in uh, America because they are all in Japan. They still are. And mm-hmm. also, and they are very worried about me not uh, be able to get a job after I finish my studying abroad. Mm-hmm. So I was very depressed at that time because I didn't know what to do. And there was no clue back then uh, if I can actually become a professional artist. Although right. that was my dream and that's the reason I came to the United States. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you somehow found this current gallery that you're with? Uh, yes, that was uh, when I was still in uh, between BFA program, MFA program. I was accepted to MFA program, but I wanted to take one semester off to really think with what I should do. Mm-hmm. But during that time, I was uh, working in, at a bookstore, Japanese bookstore in mm-hmm. Midtown, and I walked to up by east side after the job and uh, I was uh, using the undergraduate Hunter College um, studio and mm-hmm. painting for a couple of hours after the job uh, on the weekdays and I tried to go there on weekends too. Yeah, and yeah. I made only a few paintings for one semester. It was uh, the one I posted on Instagram was the kind of pink background with a blue feathers dress with a long and braid. Long, yes, mm-hmm. the long braids, I remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the painting I made it uh, in that studio. <laughs> the shared and studio. I think one of those paintings you did went to a museum or something like that, you said? Uh, I believe I'm honestly not sure where it is. 
right now. Uh, uh, the first gallery owned that uh, piece with a pink background, mm -hmm. uh, but but it was exhibit. It, it was they had they exhibited in uh, museums, actually. Oh, uh, okay. And yeah. what's the name of the gallery that you uh, were showing at that time? At that time, I was uh, working with Kravitz Wavy. That was my very first gallery I was working with. Mm -hmm. Right. And now, mm -hmm. which gallery are you with? I'm with uh, Newman Wilson Art. That uh, it's relatively new, and they were uh, they have a mission to um, protect artists from <laughs> uh, from the uh, commercial business that can be a little sleazy. <laughs> And, right. Uh, yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> well, I don't like this. Uh, I don't like saying like something bad because uh, all the I appreciate those commercial galleries to show those art to public for free. That is very, it's very um, enriching. That I didn't have much in Japan. But uh, that right. can be. But some galleries I learned over a decade of my experience. It, it can be a little tricky. So that yes, there are many stories where galleries sell works and they don't pay the artist or stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So you have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So the my current gallery is trying to protect the artists from that kind of um, not quite <laughs> legal activities. So. Right. Um, and when was your last show with them, or when will you have something with this current gallery again? Uh, that was uh, that is actually up in the air still, unfortunately, because um, they are willing to do art fairs, but uh, for now they do like to do uh, virtual gallery shows instead of the actual physical one. Mm -hmm. Only because it's the New York City hasn't really come back here yet. That's mm -hmm. right. So I think they will wait until what uh, what actually will turn into after this quarantine. Right. I think uh, last time I spoke to you, you said some new work you were doing uh, included landscapes that you had never really painted landscapes before. Can you tell us what your current work looks like? Oh, it is. Yes. Um, yes, I have a plan to do some landscapes that about... Uh, uh, about a little bit about quarantine and also it's uh, I've been working as an ideal escape on and off mm -hmm. yeah. and yes that's the landscape it has uh, kind of a little um, beautified more than like a regular <laughs> actual landscape and uh, mm -hmm. I do like to make it a little dreamlike and mm -hmm to create this atmosphere of escape, but it's, uh, and also raise a question about escape too. It's, I always drawn into this idea by direct to escape from this reality. I think it <laughs> happens to a lot of people. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Well, tell me, um, uh, how does it, look in terms of size like is it bigger than the portraits or is it smaller these landscapes that you're doing uh, i'd like to keep it the uh, same as portrait size i'm into doing a little smaller scale right now to create something mm -hmm. intimate from like um directory feels like it's more uh personalized so just uh, you have to only because you have to get close to the actual work and mm -hmm. uh, concerning that a lot of people look at art through smartphone or iPad, it's concerning a size. I think it's good to make a, a little small, intimate feeling. So I'm making right. a yeah, right. Um, so I'm making probably uh, a little bit smaller, than eighteen by twenty-four inches, which is uh, the face gets uh, slightly smaller than the actual size, if, if that portrait, if it's a portrait. Right. right. 
And you told me uh, last time you live upstate and you work upstate uh, with your husband and child. Right. Um, how does it work out out there right now? I mean, the two of you working, uh, you, I don't know how you influence each other in terms of creativity, your husband and yourself. Um, yeah, it's actually good. Uh, my husband is actually very good about um, talking about other people's art and uh um he doesn't really criticize but um he sometimes brings up like uh kind of critical comments if i ask and he's te- uh-huh. he has experience of teaching so he he's very helpful <laughs> but uh Good. yeah and also my daughter does a uh, criticism <laughs> To my How old is your daughter? Uh, she's nine years old, actually. Oh, perfect. And, uh, she, yes. 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 <laughs> and uh, she's very good at uh, using a language. <laughs> and also, mm-hmm. she's also an artist mm-hmm. by herself, so <laughs> for her own. Lovely. Yeah. yeah, she's into drawing, and she wants to compete against me, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's sweet. good. You know, when you have a niece who's your mother, then you have a, a lot to... Uh, look up to <laughs> yeah yes, yes she's so mm-hmm. go ahead oh me. yeah she she was just uh, this morning she was uh talking about this uh idea wh- where the talent comes from is it like a genetic thing or <laughs> just or like she's uh, or like uh, the work she does i told her mm-hmm. it's probably both and also the environment also. They, they, Absolutely. Yeah. She makes uh, more drawing than I do <laughs> every day. So she's uh, she's really fast growing artist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with your own work, I mean, the landscapes, do they look sort of, I don't know what style you're painting them in, but would you say that your background from Japan has influenced them? Because, you know, there are some Japanese uh, paintings that you look at traditional painting and they have that sort of otherworldly atmosphere uh, yes um, I actually look at a lot of Japanese traditional ch- Japanese paintings um, many people here refer my paintings portraits as like a European influenced portraits and it's, mm-hmm. I think it's true but also I have a strong influence by um female um, traditional Japanese artist um, Mm -hmm. who was also painting uh, beautiful women. There's a category, it's called like a painting beautiful women in Japan. And uh, Mm -hmm. she's a very rare female artist who paints very specifically only women. And I was, uh, I can't, I can't see the difference between uh, female portrayed by mm-hmm. female artists and by yeah. male artists. They are, the point of view is very, they are very different. One is from the uh, subjective point of view and the other one is more objective point of view. Right. So, yeah, right. So that was uh, my big influence for my portrait. And also the landscape, since it's new, I okay. oh bless you. <laughs> I'm, Thank you. <laughs> I haven't quite decided how I'm going to paint um, the specific landscape, but um, I do like to do some experiment uh, with acrylic paint using like a watercolor mm-hmm. and combined with like a. Uh, uh, a kind of oil paint, thicker, uh, opaque painting. So it can be a little more, uh, I'm thinking to make a little realistic, but uh, also painterly, painterly uh, feeling, painterly field of landscape, mm-hmm. and also combined with a uh, two dimensional uh, background, which is kind of brings us into reality at the same time, but also the entire image becomes really uh, imaginary 
strange. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't unexpected uh, view. That's what I'm trying yeah. to achieve. Yes. And I remember you mentioned about your um, portraits that there was some idea also behind them of being multicultural or uh, being more than embracing several different cultures in the in the portrait, whether it was with the hair or the background. I, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, when I started painting, um, I made a five series in 2005 and five paintings and it developed from like a kind of practice portrait to um, more multicultural figures to create the reality I live in. I lived in New York City for uh, five years, I think, by then, four, four mm -hmm. five years back then. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a huge difference between uh, where I lived in Japan. It's just uh, most people I knew back then was only Japanese. And we all look similar, even like uh, there are some Chinese students and there are some maybe Korean people are also there, mm -hmm. but I, nobody can tell the difference as long as they speak Japanese. And mm -hmm. So, but in New York City, as soon as I came in, it's very different. It's very multicultural. Mm -hmm. It's a real melting pot. And I got uh, enough influence from that by living there for four or five years. So I mm -hmm. wanted to express that, um, that my... Um, the environment through the portrait, right? right. And uh, mm -hmm. at that time, also in Japan, that uh, hip hop culture became very, very popular. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and some people started dressing like, um, like street, street hip hop, <laughs> hip hop stars. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, uh, I wanted to reflect that culture. On that, on my paintings, also. Well, that's how I started developing the multi race um, figures. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, uh, I took a break after 2011 when a big earthquake happened in Japan. It was Tohoku earthquake, mm -hmm. and uh, that made me realize how I, I am attached to my culture as a Japanese. So I started painting using like a red, black, and white, which is uh, mm -hmm. used to paint uh, no drama masks. So I, mm -hmm. so I followed that uh, combination for many years, actually. But recently, um, no, from 2020, it's a huge, uh, um, huge movement happening. Uh, Black Lives Matter, and also, mm -hmm. um, also like four years ago, there's like some uh, kind of um, prejudice against immigrants, also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think I started around that time four years ago, I started painting mm -hmm. multicultural uh, figures. Mm -hmm just to express myself that I'm, I'm also a part of the uh, immigrants. Also, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Japanese mm -hmm. and my nationality is somehow protected in America compared with others. Like right. I, I can just see that politically. Mm -hmm. But I had uh, compassion and also that uh, I can feel the fear that, like, um, about the status of like uh, of immigrants that like became very fragile and they're losing how losing their homes here. Mm -hmm. Right. So I wanted to comply that um, into my paintings. 
Yes. yes and well they definitely are uh beautiful as well uh i know some people have a thing about art that's too beautiful or too much like decoration right but sometimes if you're dealing with some um, heavy topics it's better to have a light delivery mm-hmm. right uh, yeah that's uh, how uh, i get criticism in uh, <laughs> in school i think often it's too decorative or too well manufactured in a way mm-hmm. right but well everyone has their style mm-hmm. so. right yeah yeah at the time i felt uh i felt a little bad <laughs> about that but uh-huh. now it's just uh it's um it's just my language i exactly. right i just have that culture and but it's nothing bad about it it's just me <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, but I have my well, voice. I think that's mm-hmm. the good thing about growing up and growing into your work. You realize uh, you don't need to make excuses anymore for how you are. Right, right. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah, it is. Just, yeah, it's a, uh, it's like a, kind of like a school culture. I think to do it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, uh, well, thank you for taking this time to speak to me again. I mean, is there anything else you wanted to add before we ended? Oh, um, should we? <laughs> well, I maybe it's a little bit uh, late. Congratulations to Naomi Osaka <laughs> again. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm so impressed at uh, how she made a statement. And she made it through. <laughs> she used all the yes. seven masks, and I'm very, um, very proud as a Japanese, and also live in America. She's a, she's a half American and half Japanese. <laughs> absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. So I, I really, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, artists like yourself making a statement, and then uh, some people would even say that those tennis players have some level of artistry to their play so yes thank you to her too yeah <laughs> yeah i think a lot of people are actually doing it and i i'm very inspired i think that that the more people the better <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> all right thank you so much again have a great uh, weekend and we'll speak soon yeah thank you so much Thank you, Aya. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Yes, take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to Aya talk about her work and how it fits into our contemporary world. Uh, See you next week on another episode of the Bees and Honey podcast.